Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Obviously, fallout from All Out. Dave Meltzer joining us here today. We've got a Dynamite rating to talk about and the estimated buy rate. But, Dave, obviously the important question here is, <laughs> who to win in a real fight, CM Punk or Bobby Fish? <laughs> 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 That's a good question. I don't really worry about stuff like that, but I did see uh, I did see Bobby Fish's comments, which were, I always think it's funny because it's like it doesn't matter at all. You know what I mean? Um, and usually when guys talk about that, they end up getting themselves in trouble, like Matt Riddle when he said he would win a real fight with Roman Reigns, which he probably would. <laughs> I mean, he's trained as a real fighter, not a football player, but whatever. It doesn't it. Doesn't really now. Matter. You're really gonna be in trouble. I know. <laughs> you I, picked I know. sides. I, 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 pro- I probably, I, I probably got riddled in trouble just by saying that. All right. Well, let's let's not get anyone in trouble. What did you think of the? Oh, we're gonna uh, get people in trouble for sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dynamite uh, 1.035 million on Wednesday, 8.38, and obviously there was a lot happening on this show, so it's no surprise the show did well. But it is the third straight week over a million. And we do have a tournament going on where a world champion will be crowned on TV. Right. So I think this streak might continue a few more weeks. What are your thoughts? You know, this week number didn't really mean anything to me one way or the other because there was so much stuff. I think the main thing to learn from is how much all of this stuff meant. And it meant something, but it didn't mean like game changing like they... I'm trying. I'm still trying to figure out what the angle is that Real Housewives did because they were like way, way up from usual, and they actually beat AEW. I'm just trying to think. Like, did something happen backstage in Real Housewives that maybe we there was a fight? Who knows? Yeah, it's like did they have like some Josh Koscheck and Chris Lieben thing going on that I missed? So anyway, um, I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, next week's number I actually am kind of intrigued by to see if they if they stay over a million. That's a really good sign, you know. If they stay, you know, in that. You know, over 0.35, it'd be excellent um, next week. And obviously, the New York show should do really well. I mean, you're going to have, you know, Moxley against either Danielson or Jericho in the main event, and it will be for the championship. And there will be the, the acclaimed tag team title match, which to some people should be a real big deal. That's more of an insider thing. But the acclaimed are very, very over right now with the AEW fan base and them going for the title in New York um, is pretty good. It, you know, I mean, the thing is just, not just is that match probably going to be good, but there. But the key to that is the if the acclaimed wins, that may be like a really great reaction. I mean, we just got the thing with Garcia this week in Buffalo, but this would be that same thing that we got, but but much bigger. So I mean, those kind of moments are really cool in wrestling, unless they don't. It doesn't doesn't happen, I guess. But I think it will. That's all right. Action Bronson coming out to rap. He and Hook's entrance is going to make it to make the day for everybody there. Surely. <laughs> Well, we also have the uh, estimated buy rate, 135 to 142,000 buys, which obviously is way down from last year. But I think most everybody predicted something in this range for this show. It was a little lower than I expected, but not appreciably lower. Um, I think, I mean, the one thing I think is is pretty clear is that um, the really good AEW buy rates, you know, aside from the one that, that Punk drew last year, I mean, are really like cards that are really really deep and also like matches that are announced ahead of time like if you think about like um the one that like the the full the revolution show this year which was actually the biggest one of the year i mean that show was loaded with big matches i mean way way deep you know with and and a fantastic show this one it was like um the main event came together on the wednesday before the show the trios match came together on the friday before the show and i think you just need i mean i understand why it happened and and he had a lot of timing you know there's problems with timing guys were hurt and couldn't come back earlier and it just like that's what happened but it was not it was not a perfect scenario uh to build for a big buy rate i guess in hindsight i think we did learn that you know announcing the show the wednesday before probably is something to be avoided if it, if at all possible. There probably there may be times due to injury where they have to do it again, but it's it's a good thing to learn from that don't do that one again. Yeah, it's certainly not a cataclysmic decline or anything like that. Although it's I'm not sure a some, disaster, no, you know, not at all. I mean, and, I thought it was going to do one one fifty around that or a little bit more than that. So I guess it's a little bit of a surprise. But I mean, you know, I know he's really. 
obviously the move from WWE to move NXT, that sticks in his crawl. I'm not sure what else does, and I completely understand that. But do you think that it's just a matter of the build, which I think, you, which you, obviously you mentioned, and I think that was an issue too, but also the economy and some other factors too, far well, always... more than anything about WWE, because I know I know he's pissed, and I know he went off about that both when you, on the show with you and Brian and on after the press conference, but... You know, I mean, it just seems like a show at one o'clock on a Saturday in England and then an NXT on at four, which was a short card. I, I, I you know, I, it's hard to, to blame that more than to me, the economy and the build. Well, the build is the number one factor, but you you can't throw out the other one either. I mean, um, people are only going to watch so much wrestling in a week. And, and um, there were people who were going to choose Clash over that for their weekend. So, I mean, it had something to do with it. I don't think it was a giant difference. Um, I mean, I think that the NXT, you know, I don't think that, put it this way. If, if Paul Levesque felt it didn't, that NXT show is not on that day. I mean, that's on, it was on that day for that specific reason, so they felt that. And the idea of, um, you know, burning the audience out, is that's a WWE uh, marketing ploy going back to the 80s, going into a market and you run the show the night before the WCW pay-per-view and run a long show, and then people just are tired and don't want to go or don't want to buy the pay-per-view the next day in, in the case of running, you know, um, right before. You know, and it's like... I just can recall, like, uh, just as, as an example, at my house a couple weeks ago, you know, not that long ago, I think it was Forbidden Door Night, but it was one of the, the um, AW pay-per-views, and there was a UFC pay-per-view on at the same time right after, and everybody was going to stay and watch both, and when the Forbidden Door was over, it was like, everybody was going to stay, it was a big UFC show, and then it was just like, oh, we're tired, we watched a show, and nobody stayed to watch the UFC show, so it does, it, it is well, a Well, yeah, if you, if you remember that press conference, I mean, when CM Punk was, was uh, doing what he was doing, I mean, I'm sure inside Tony was like, ah! But, but, you know, outside, he just sat there and listened and everything like that, but the one time he visibly got angry was when talking about the competition. And, I mean, he really went off about how I'm not going to stand for this. And and uh, he essentially kind of admitted, like, I expect this show to be down because of all of this competition. Yeah, I mean, if there was no, you know, the... But- it was booked for that reason. I'm not saying Clash. Clash was Clash of the Clash of the Castle was probably booked. I mean, Labor Day weekend was part of the strategy, and and I think that it was, um, you know, like a small small part of booking it was was the AEW show. Um, they could have done a different weekend. I think that that you know it was part of it. Um, but I mean, the NXT was 100. percent You know, so it's like. Levesque thought that that was the case. That's why he did it. Tony thinks it's part of the case. It probably is. I've been around people. I've seen the burnout. You know, even when you plan to do it, once you've seen a show, I mean, Brian, you do this all the time, as do I on Saturdays. You know, like when there's two, three shows a day, you know, after the first one, you know, even if the second one's a great show, we're not so hyped about watching a second show on the same day. Even if that was our plan and we knew we were going to do it, it's if, if we didn't get paid for this, so to speak... We probably would go, you know what, I've seen a show this weekend, I'll watch again Monday night. I mean, that's that's just, there is a reality to that. Yeah, human nature, you get a lot more picky that way, for sure. And I, 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 yeah, I have a question for you, really, and it doesn't cause you to get in Tony Khan's head. And Brian, this is to you, too, because I know, obviously, he's been through this rigmarole before, but right now the NFL season is starting. The, yes. the Premier League is is in full gear here, full gear. and you have this big show. With all this going on, what has been kind of his mindset in the past? How do you know he keeps things? How does he stay as level as he does and try to, to manage things in the way that he does? Can you kind of like, can you get in his head a little bit, I guess, really, when it comes to this? I have no answer because I don't know how it's possible. He does it. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like it's like I used to think like Vince had a lot of responsibility and believe me, he did. Or Dana had a lot of responsibility. And he did. This is the guy doing the work of three of those. How can you do that? I mean, you know, thank God he's under 40 because when he's 55, I, there's no way there's no way he's going to be able to do this workload. I don't think. Well, you say he's I mean, doing the work of three guys, but it's actually kind of 43 because Vince at least had 40 writers that uh, he could. uh you know. Yeah. 
I know. I mean, it's like, it, it, it's, I mean, obviously for a long, 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 long time, you know, I mean, I've said that thing. It's just like, he doesn't want to delegate. He thinks that if you do, people stab you in the back. He talked, you know, he talked about it in our interview, but man, I, I just don't know how anyone can work that much um, on so many jobs and be good at all those jobs. I mean, it just seems, um, you know, but I mean, AEW, you know, really, AW is doing well. I mean, it's not doing as well as it was one year ago. Um, but it's it's doing well, all things considered, you know, especially because the competition is much tougher right now than it was a year ago. And he has made a step by putting a buffer in place. You know, at least with in place. some people. Yeah. So, you know, th there is that. Well, obviously, the top story in The Observer is all the details on everything going on backstage, uh, the fight Sunday, the press conference, and seems to be very quiet team, today. I guess we're just team, waiting team, until... Team meeting. Yeah. yeah I think... Every, I think every, I think there's, there's really nothing left to say. I mean, obviously, the details of what really happened, um, well, are sketchy, but um, I'm sure that more will come out when the investigation's over. I, I'm, I'm sure. But until then, you know, nothing's. I don't expect anything more to come out, and uh, that's the situation. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the title. Sorry, Brian. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> Got a text. My bad. It plays a song for a text. Brian, move along. Who here in the chat can name that tune? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's this person says it sounds like Faith with that one guy. <laughs> We gotta have one faith. Guy. Yeah, whatever his name was. His name is George Michael. George Michael, that's right. Yes. I was gonna say Shawn Michaels. No. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.